What's up everyone? My name is Jessica. If you're stumbling upon this and you're like searching up pregnancy videos, girl, same. <laughs> like I have watched so many videos, but the kicker is that this is my second pregnancy, that my second baby. And so our gap between like our first kiddo we had, she's three and a half years old. So it's a little bigger of a gap than I think some people, not all people obviously, but because of that, there's just so much I don't remember and that I've forgotten and that has changed. I mean, there's a lot really when I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about like products, like new products that are out that I'm like, they did not have that when I had her a couple years ago. Anyway, so I feel like I'm kind of starting from scratch in a way. My mindset is very different this time around and that's a lot of what we're gonna talk about. Things I experienced that first time around that were awful. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. And so we're gonna kind of dive into that. I asked you guys some questions. I also just have a lot to share with you guys about this particular pregnancy, but then also comparing it to my first. And I feel like if you're watching this and this is the first time you've been pregnant, first time you're maybe having a baby, I do think that your mindset will be different than if you have a second. And I know you've heard that and you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, I know. I got annoyed hearing people say that, but I do wanna share some tidbits, like some nuggets of knowledge with you guys that might help you the first time around too. I'm also starving. So partway through this video, my husband's making breakfast. He's, his brothers are here and they're having their like monthly brothers breakfast. It's so sweet. But uh, I'm obviously gonna steal a plate of breakfast and bring it up here and I, the bacon smells so good and I'm so freaking hungry. So at some point we're gonna pause and I'm gonna go eat and then I'll come back. A little background. So my daughter is three and a half. Her name is Genevieve, we call her Gigi. And that pregnancy was really rough. We've switched doctors from who we had then. And while I think that doctor was actually herself a fantastic doctor, the practice that she had created was so messy. Like that I'm trying to think of a better, disorganized is the best word. So communication didn't exist. There were certain things like I was supposed to be on progesterone, shots that my husband was supposed to give me at home. Like a month, month and a half had passed before they'd even told us and they assumed we already knew and no one communicated. Someone was supposed to teach him how to do it. We were supposed to get the, the stuff we needed, which is scary because if you need progesterone shots, that means there's something going wrong that needs to help. The, you know what I'm saying? So a lot went wrong and a lot was miscommunicated. And so at the end of that pregnancy, I had horrible postpartum depression and I waited way too long to tell a doctor, way too long. And so I suffered needlessly and I'm so like looking back, I'm like, I'm so mad at myself. I knew that's what it was, but I kept thinking, well, maybe tomorrow will be better. Or next week will be better. And I just suffered and suffered. And it affected, I think that entire first year of enjoying my daughter. It was just rough. So we have a new doctor. The practice is so organized. Like I'm, I'm excited about the hospital we're going to deliver at. Like everything is the way I think it should have been the first time around. So that is good. I'm in a way better spot when it comes to the doctor, the practice, the, the facilities, all of that. So that was a problem I knew I could solve for this next time around and I did solve. So I'm glad for that. There's so much to talk about. I'm like nervous this video is gonna be so long. So I hope you're just strapped on in because I'm gonna share a lot of details. But the first thing I wanted to talk about now that we've kind of gotten that out of the way is my early pregnancy symptoms. I've been keeping a log of every week. You know, when you're doing that weight, we started trying over a year ago. And we were definitely getting to the point where we were like, okay, we should maybe go see a fertility doctor. I don't know the exact rule of thumb and you know, you do what you want for yourself, but I kind of heard around a year, if you've been trying and like doing it at the right times and tracking it for a year and nothing's happened, you might start considering seeing someone. I'm 32 years old, I'll be 33 in January. So also knowing that like, I'm like, all right, I really should, we need to get serious about this because we knew we wanted at least one more kid. So, that meant that every month we were doing that two week wait where we're like waiting and I'm like, do I have symptoms? Like maybe, and then you can finally test and you're like, I don't know, is the line kind of faintly there? And you do all that kind of mental gymnastics. But when I actually was pregnant, this, and I, I even wrote before I knew these were my symptoms, I had really sore boobs. <laughs> like really sore, weirdly sore. I was a bit more tired, like it was harder to wake up in the morning. That's kind of hard to glean, but like that was definitely like that existed. I was like, I, it was hard to get up in the morning. I was having crazy dreams. Like I wish I could remember some of them. I should have written them down, but just like off the wall, wild, weird, vivid dreams. And then <laughs> the kicker, and this is one I've told some of my friends too, the kicker, and when I knew like, I might be pregnant and a few days later was finally the time to test and like see. I was trying to make runny eggs. We were making like eggy holes, like where you cut the middle of the bread out and you, you fry an egg, but we like them to be runny, 
which is funny because when you're pregnant, you're not supposed to have runny eggs. Again, didn't know if I was pregnant or not. Anyway, I was trying to get them runny and I was so mad because I kept frying them fully. Like I kept breaking the yolk and it would fry. And I got so mad, I threw the spatula across the kitchen. I said, forget it. And then I just instantly started bawling and I'm like sitting on the ground. My husband was like, are you okay? I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. So anyway, days later when I finally took the test, I was pregnant and <laughs> there we are, but that was abnormal. Like, I mean, any of us can have a temper, but that was like weird. All of that was like that week before I knew. So still within that two week wait, but that all of those were abnormal, you know? Once I knew I was pregnant, like I'd taken the test, I'm like, all right, I, I'm, it was a faint line, but I'm pretty sure and each day I would test again just cause I was impatient, you know? I had lower back pain, like noticeable, not like cramping. Well, it was similar to like cramping that time of the month. So it was a little confusing because it, in theory that is around that time of the month when I was able to test and just like some cramping. So my guess was that would have been like implantation cramping. But again, it's confusing because if you don't know for sure if you're pregnant, that's around the time you test, that's around the time you'd be getting your period and probably having those like cramps anyway. So once I like got into weeks five and six, that's when morning sickness kicked in and I did not have morning sickness at all that I remember with Genevieve, at all. And I didn't realize how lucky I was. And now I will forever have empathy with anyone that has it because I didn't have it as bad where I was like throwing up, but even just that awful nausea feeling all day long is terrible, it's terrible. So like I would, it started with like, I would eat lunch and I would like halfway through be like, ugh, and I would just suddenly be disgusted with whatever it was I was eating, didn't matter what it was. And then I started getting a huge aversion for eggs and eggs are, if you know me, my favorite food in the world, like in the world. Like I'll still eat eggs, but like boiled eggs, I'm still a little like unsure of. And by the way, I'm at like 20 weeks when I'm filming this. So well, actually by the time you see it, it might be a little later, but generally around that time. So I'm about halfway through and definitely into the second trimester, like past all of the morning sickness. So I did, my OB told me I could take B6 and Unisom, and that's a very commonly like, not prescribed because they're not prescription, but that's a very common like first step from the doctor to try to combat it. I do think, I didn't take the Unisom, but I started taking the B6 and I don't remember why I didn't do both. But anyway, um, I started taking the B6 at night and by like four days into it, I already felt better. And it was one of those things that I was like, I couldn't decide, is it just that my body's getting over the morning sickness or was it the B6? But I'm like, I don't care. I'm feeling better. I'm just gonna keep going on the B6 for a while. So I did, I do have Unisom. My doctors told me I can take like, if I really can't sleep, like take it at night, but you wouldn't wanna like make a habit of it. So anyway, I have that. I've done that like one night, that's it. But anyway, that's kind of where that was. But the nausea really was bad, you guys. There was, I had to take some time away from YouTube for multiple reasons, but a lot of it was morning sickness and I couldn't share that with you guys, like what was going on. By week eight, my nausea was gone. And again, I don't know if that was the B6 or if it was just, I was finally getting over it, but there was light at the end of the tunnel. And you better believe I read like every forum that's ever existed about when did people's morning sickness stop? Like looking for polls online to see. So to share with you guys, week eight was around when mine was gone. Then by like weeks nine through 11, I had a lot of bloating. I considered like taking Miralax to just help get things going. Cause that was an issue. I didn't end up doing it and things ended up just being fine. I drank more water. I was like, okay, I need to go on more walks just to get you know what I mean? And that seemed to help a lot. But weeks 13 and 14, I started getting these awful headaches, awful headaches. It was kind of around when we started using like, well, no, I don't know if we were starting to use the heat in the house. Regardless, awful like sinus pressure -y headaches. And so I would take Tylenol, but it didn't always help. And I didn't want to take it constantly if I could avoid it. And so I started doing sinus rinses and that, I'll link my favorite one I've been using for years. It helped so much like doing that morning and night and if it was really bad in the middle of the day perfectly safe as long as you use like super clean like distilled water if you can etc that is important but that has helped a lot and so now i finally on the other end of that but that was not fun either <laughs> and another thing my doctor did tell me to start taking a magnesium supplement to help with the headaches and also with like restless legs and all that i usually we drink like a, a magnesium drink Again, I'll link it, it's delicious. We've been doing that just generally in life for the past few years in the evening. 
And it helps so much. Like my restless legs and stuff like that has like all but subsided. Like it's just gone. But I'm taking a low dose of magnesium supplement as well to help with that. I mean, that's probably why I don't have as many headaches. So that is good. But that's, you know, by week 17-ish. And again, this is my second pregnancy. I started to feel like little flutters. And now by week 20, I'm definitely feeling kicking. And actually today, we leave in like an hour to go find out what the, uh, you know, if it's a boy, is it a girl? Like, what is it? So we are so excited. We're not really, that was a question I got a lot. Like, do you want it to be a girl? Do you want it to be a boy? We really don't care. We, I mean, obviously had a girl first. And so if we had another girl, we got plenty of hand-me-downs and we know how to deal with a girl. <laughs> if it's a boy, that's exciting too, because we don't have a boy. So we're really in a nice spot where neither one of us we don't really have an inkling of what we think it is and we really don't care. Like we're excited either way. So that is awesome and we find out in hours. But another question I got was, uh, do you feel like you've got a little bit of anxiety surrounding like if there are gonna be issues? Because it is scary. Being pregnant is just scary. And if you're someone that's already prone to being anxious about things, it only exacerbates it, which makes sense because you're not just worried about your own health, but you're worried about, you know, is the baby okay? Like, has it moved today in there? Like, there's so much that could go wrong that it's really easy to be sucked into that black hole of anxiety where you're like, oh my gosh, like this, I'm feeling weird. I had this pain. And, you know, one thing I'm trying to be good about this time around is if I really am concerned, call my doctor talk to the nurse line, they always ease my fears. And if it is something that they're like, ah, oh, maybe, then I can go in, they can check it out. And again, I'll sleep better at night. But otherwise, if I don't feel like it's serious enough to like call in, then I'm trying to be better about Jessica, just let it go, take some deep breaths. What will be, will be, everything's most likely gonna be fine. And if it's not, we will cross that bridge. But I can't let myself get swallowed up in that because what's the point? You know what I mean? Then that's added stress when most likely things are okay. The only other symptom, by the way, I've had would be like those um, round ligament pains. I, and at one point I did call the doctor because it was like pain in the middle and it freaked me out and it was lasting like a day. And again, I was like <laughs> freaking out and Tyler was like, just call the doctor, like it's not a big deal, just call and ask, you're gonna feel better. I'm like, you're right. So finally, after like a day of like, I don't know, I just called and they were like, it's probably just round ligament pain. If it's, you know, take some Tylenol, if it's still lasting in another day, call us again, we can come in and make sure everything's okay. But they were very, very, like it seemed like a very common problem. But again, just calling made me feel better, so. And then, by the way, it subsided after some Tylenol and I didn't feel it again, so that's good. When is the baby due? It is due in late winter, early spring. I, I don't wanna give like an exact date. I know people can be weird about it, I, but just that's generally when it's due. So I am I'm excited. And the reality is we, we don't know because you could know a due date and go into labor early. You could, you know, things could go wrong and you have to like be, be induced early, so you know, who knows, but that's the general timeline. So other than like those symptoms I shared with you, this pregnancy so far, and again, I mean, this is a huge knock on wood, because of all the issues I did have when I was pregnant with Genevieve, this doctor has decided to have me go to maternal fetal medicine, which is basically like a pregnancy specialist, if you will. It's a really general way to look at it, where they're gonna do a really intensive, that sounds like dramatic, but a really intensive ultrasound to look at everything, make sure everything looks good. And it's basically above and beyond the normal anatomy scan that they do. And we're doing that in place of that because of like Genevieve, she had a, a congenital heart defect that doesn't, it isn't affecting her, but it was something that, you know, her heart, like part of it is just backwards. So those are, I mean, that's enough reason for them to be like, let's make sure like with this baby that everything's okay. So we're doing that which in the weirdest way, it's it's terrifying and that's happening today. So we'll see like, is everything okay? Is the baby growing okay? But it's also a relief in a way too, because we know they're really looking at everything and making sure that everything is okay. So it's kind of bittersweet and I certainly did not sleep well last night knowing that this was happening today. What are you doing to prepare for or prevent postpartum mood disorders? So as I said, I eventually got on Lexapro after talking to just my primary care doctor. I was like, hey, and then there was like an online portal and I like messaged like, hey, and it was finally, like I said, way, way past like when I should have reached out. But um, I finally did because it wasn't getting better and he was like, no problem. And we did like an online, you know, appointment because it was like in the height of the pandemic. And, and that's what I mean by like way too late, like year, two years too late. But I finally did it, got on Lexapro. After a few weeks, y'all, I was feeling like my normal self and I could cry because it was like, wow, this is what it's supposed to feel like. Like I had no idea. So anyway, I'm not on it anymore because really the six months, 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Y'all. Breakfast. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, I'll be back in a bit. I scarfed that breakfast down, y'all. So going back to, I think this was the question I was on. Basically, like, how are you going to prepare for, you know, postpartum mood disorders or anything that may come your way? I think I may be predisposed to that, so that's one piece of it. But I also think because that pregnancy and the delivery, there was so much that I did not expect. And that is a recipe for postpartum anxiety and depression. It just is. And so like when things go wrong or things go differently than you expected, the reality is anytime with labor delivery, it's not gonna go exactly how you expect it, period. Even if it's still a really smooth process, but mine was not smooth and I wasn't told they knew ahead of time that she was gonna go to the NICU for a bit because of some of the issues they knew but they did not tell me that. And that again, that was a communication breakdown. If I had known that going in, I don't know, maybe I still would have had postpartum depression, but I don't think it would have been as bad. Again, I think some of it was preventable, some of it maybe wasn't. My OB this time has told me that if I want, I can go straight on to Lexapro right after giving birth. Like, I mean, I don't know if it's the same day or like days after, but you know what I mean? So that I don't have to go through it, <laughs> basically. And I'm, I really am still on the fence and I don't need to make that decision right this second. Because I'm like, well, what if it is different? You know, what if things do go smoother and I'm going into this with a very different mindset? What if I don't have it and I don't even need to do that? But then there's the other piece of me that's like, well, do you want to find out? Because I don't really want to find out, you know? So I have not made that decision. You know, at the end of the day, it is my decision. So we'll see where I end up. I'm sure I will share that pieces of that with you later on down the road. Pregnancy skincare routine. Y'all, if I had an answer, I'd tell you. I feel like every time I'm like, I think this is pregnancy safe. You look it up, nothing's pregnancy safe. <laughs> I've talked to my doctor about some of the things. And so I, I think I've narrowed down what she says is safe to use that I feel comfortable using. I will probably do a little more research, ask her a few more questions, and then possibly do a video on it. The reality is you have to take it with a grain of salt. You always wanna to talk to your own doctor about it. Pregnancy is just such a big question mark and skincare with it because so much skincare has come out in the past like 20 years that just hasn't been tested. They just don't know. So I will probably share that with you once I solidify mine. I've definitely just simplified mine. I will tell you that I'm not using, I'm basically just down to my like makeup remover and cleanser, a serum of some kind and a moisturizer. And that's pretty much it versus, you know, I used to obviously use retinol. That is one I know you cannot use. I've simplified it a lot and yeah, I'll share that in the future in a video. So subscribe, stay tuned. <laughs> Do you like pregnancy? I know some people are indifferent, some love it and some hate it. That's a really hard question, but I, I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day, they were over for dinner and she was like also pregnant and she doesn't like being pregnant. She was like, I really just feel like it's a means to an end because she loves the postpartum period. I'm like, that's funny <laughs> because I hate the postpartum period. I don't hate it, but again, you, I've already, I've exhausted that topic, but I think I don't mind it. I, maybe I'm indifferent and maybe veering towards liking it, but I don't love it. Like being pregnant, especially once I get farther along. Like right now I have a bump. I'll pop a picture if you want to see my 20 week bump. I definitely have a bump and I've definitely gained weight, but once you get so big, it really is uncomfortable. And then that first trimester, forget it, that was awful. You know, you're asking me that question at a time where I'm in that kind of honeymoon phase where everything feels like I feel pretty good and my energy is pretty good and I don't feel sick and it, you know, so I, I don't know. I think I, you, it just comes in waves. I don't hate it though. It is not something I absolutely hate, but like last time I was induced at 41 weeks and I, that was pregnant for too long, y'all. That was too long. So by then, if you'd asked me, I'd be like, yeah, I do not like being pregnant, so. Have you had to change your coffee intake? Yes, y'all know I love coffee. I just basically have been doing, like I'll always start my day with a regular cup of coffee. My doctor has told me two cups, and my last doctor told me the same thing. Two cups of coffee, you're fine. Especially if you're not drinking them right after each other, like within the same like hour. So I always start my day with a cup of coffee and usually I finish half of it, reheat it, put it in, to -go, in a to-go cup, the other half of it while I'm like driving. And then really if I'm feeling it later, I'll do another cup maybe and I usually never finish it or I'll just do like half calf. That's pretty much it. It's funny, the first time around, I was like so sad to drink less coffee, but that was when I was teaching. Boy, I needed that coffee to survive. Now that I'm doing YouTube full time, it's it's just different. My days are very different and I'm not getting up as early. And so I think because of that, it hasn't been as big of a deal to cut back on that intake. You know what, that leads me to maybe the biggest thing I wanted to talk about in this video. Well, hold on, let me take a sip. 
my mindset is so different this time around. And it could be because of second pregnancy, it could also just be that I'm getting a little bit older and just more aware of what being an adult really looks like. I've learned to ask questions. I would always be so apologetic, like, oh, I don't wanna take up your time or, you know, but now I realize I'm like, no, Jessica, you know, you're paying the doctor. You're paying for all this stuff. You're allowed to ask as many darn questions as you want, no matter how silly they may be. And the reality is most doctors are totally cool answering it. They know you have questions. Going through pregnancy is crazy and scary and that, you know, no pregnancy is the same. So that has been a big piece of asking questions, but really also just being on top of stuff, making sure I know what are they doing at this appointment? Just asking that question, calling if I'm not sure, doing my own research, like reading books and stuff, because I just felt ill prepared last time. And I don't think it was totally on the doctor I had. I think part of it was just that I was very much in the mindset of like, oh, you know, just go with the flow and things will happen. And I think go with the flow is, is good. But I also think you can also still prepare yourself and know some things. So that has been a change, but also just, I know what's on the other side. And now I understand, like, I feel like another question I got, so let's, I'll combine this with that, was, you know, do you feel like the transition from zero to one baby versus like one to two babies will be different? Like how will those be different? There is no doubt in my mind that the jump from no babies to a baby is a million times harder. And I know people are always like, well, but one to two is hard. I know that. I, I mean, that makes sense, right? I know what it's like to have a baby and to get no sleep. And a, I know what that phase is like. And then having another being to be taken care of at the same time is going to be hard. But it's that change of, you know, you were serving yourself. Like when you don't have kids, you can sleep in if you want on a Saturday and not worry about it. But when you have a kid or a baby, you can't do that. And you know, you're literally responsible for someone else. And I remember people telling me that, but I just didn't really fully grasp it. But now that I do kind of understand and that shift has already been made in my life, I feel like having another baby will be hard for different reasons, but that was the hardest thing for me to adjust to. And especially when we had her, none of our friends had kids, none of them. We were the first in every friend circle we have, and that was very hard. I did not account for how difficult that would be when, you know, yes, we can get a sitter from time to time and hang out with them, but it was really difficult, like if we did have to have our sweet baby with us, they didn't understand what that might look like. And so now a lot of our friends have had babies slash are pregnant right now. And so it's, it's very much a different world we're giving birth into where now we all are in the same boat and we all kind of understand. So that's a nice like weight lifted off our shoulder. Oh, this was a big one I got asked a lot. Am I still exercising? So I definitely like to like go on jogs and like runs and stuff. And I have liked that for years and years and doing like some different strength training things and like dance workouts like that are on YouTube and stuff. I certainly have not kept up with that the way that I was, which makes sense, but I am trying to keep up with that. The thing that I'm kind of substituting in is walking more often because I'm like, you know what? It's so good for you at any age, pregnant or not, like walking is so good for you. And my daughter likes doing it. My husband likes doing it. My doggy likes doing it. It's one of those things that's easy to fit into a day and it just is good for you. It's good for you. So that is something I've been doing more but I'm still trying to do like little walk runs, like especially on the treadmill where I can really keep track of my BPM and like keep my heart rate down, you know, jog for a bit. And then once I see my heart rate getting a little high, I'll walk for a bit and just kind of doing that for 15 or 20 minutes, doing dance workouts. That's has grown a little bit tricky because I did not realize how high my heart rate gets to it, which is great in normal times, you know, but boy, oh boy. <laughs> Some of those dance workouts really get me. And so that I've done some of, but I, I'm kind of being careful, but I am still doing like little bits of strength training and like, you know, I'll do plank still and like squats and there's adjustments you make, but yeah. So it's certainly not perfect. And I kind of went into this thinking, I want to work out more. My last pregnancy, I had another thing. I had a subchorionic hematoma, which basically was like a hemorrhage. Really scary, we thought we lost her, it was awful. Wouldn't wish that on anyone. Early on in the pregnancy, which is when they were going to start the progesterone shots that we didn't start until like six weeks later. I'm not bitter about it at all, guys. When that happened, my doctor basically said, you should not be working out. Like you can go on walks and stuff, but you should not be working out because of that issue. And so I really didn't. And I, you know, I gained a little bit more weight maybe than I will this pregnancy, well, time will tell. Maybe I'll gain the same amount of weight, but I definitely gained more than I was supposed to, which is pretty common. I'm always amazed at, and you know, you roll your eyes cause you're jealous. Like I'm totally jealous. People are like, I only gained like, 
15 pounds. I'm like, oh, really? That's great for you. <laughs> I gained like a thousand. Anyway, so we'll see, you know, but just knowing that it's really good for my mental health too, to like get outside, get fresh air and go on walks and all that. So, and it's helped with my headaches. So no, I don't do it all the time. I'm not doing it like five days a week, but I'm trying to get back up to at least doing it like, I'm trying to walk more like every day, but like doing something else like two or three times a week, low impact. You know, and that's something that is very much like you definitely want to talk to your doctor about that. And pretty much every time I go in, I ask like, is it still okay that I'm working out? Like, should I be running? Should I not be? Should I, you know what I mean? Because basically everyone says working out during pregnancy is good for you, but also you're tired and you're growing a baby. So like sometimes the last thing you feel like doing is working out, you know? Am I planning on a natural birth? I'm going to be doing whatever happens. I got an epidural last time and I'm going to be honest with y'all. It was the best decision I ever made. <laughs> it really was. I was induced and they always say that, am I remembering this right? That the Pitocin they give you can actually make contractions even worse. The birth was actually quite traumatic. And I remember going to like my first OB appointment after having the baby and the doctor came in, the doctor, and she said, I know you had a really traumatic birth. Are you doing okay? And I was like, I did? Like I knew the NICU thing really messed me up, but like the birth itself, I didn't realize cause you know, I was pushing, I was doing it, but then there were just like, things that went wrong. I'm not going to get into all that nitty gritty things that went wrong that because I couldn't feel it too much, you can feel, but not really from the waist down. I guess I didn't realize. And that's probably for the better because it was already rough enough. <laughs> it really was the best decision for me. I mean, that is a very personal decision. So I'm going into it knowing I would like to get an epidural, but things happen. And I know sometimes that's not always an option, but that, that is my plan. I tried all the other stuff, the laughing gas, the other, <laughs> It did not make a dent. Any baby moon vacations coming up? I talked about this in my last coffee chat video. I will link down below because I chat about all kinds of other stuff in life and a little bit about pregnancy stuff that I didn't talk about in this. So if you want to hear about that, I talk about it over there. I can link it. Oh, here's something different. And I'll do some pregnancy updates throughout. So again, subscribe and stay tuned because I will be doing these more. This is the first like pregnancy focused video I've done for this pregnancy, but I will be doing them a little more regularly now. But when I pack my hospital bag, I will do a video on that. And again, I pack, I overpacked last time, but you know what? I didn't care. And I still don't care because I hate it when people would tell me, oh, you don't need that. Oh, like just let people pack what they want to pack, man. Like who cares? It doesn't affect you if they pack like all kinds of stuff. So anyway, I'll definitely pack a little bit less, but I remember being like, I just want to, like, I felt embarrassed. Y'all are gonna make fun of me. I felt embarrassed to get like the adult diapers that everyone I heard said, buy them and bring them with you to the hospital. You will, you will use them. And I was too embarrassed to do it. And so I use like the mesh underwear they provide. You put like a bill pad in it, blah, blah, blah. That is way worse. That is way worse than just using the adult diaper. So now I know I am definitely buying those and bringing them because they will be way more comfortable. Cause I mean, you're giving birth. Y'all, there's gonna be a lot of blood. Surprise, surprise. So just having something that's a little more comfortable to catch all that is, is nice. So that is a big, like silly, like that was so immature of me to be like, so a lot of you guys are asking about Genevieve, Gigi, if she's excited, like what she thinks she is excited. Like she gets it. And a lot, like I said, a lot of our friends are pregnant or had babies recently. So she's seen a big belly and then she's seen the baby. So she understands what's going to happen, but I don't think she really grasps the gravity of what is going to change. I don't know what three-year-old would be able to grasp that, but she's excited. Like this morning she was talking to the baby, you know, in my belly and you guys are going to die. She'll open, open my belly button or so she thinks and talk to the baby through that. And that is the, I've got to get this on video just for us. That is the funniest thing in the world. As though that's like the microphone, the way to talk to the baby. It's so cute y'all. So I think she's excited, but it's, it's going to be a huge adjustment. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Have I had any cravings? Y'all not really. I mean, like day to day, I might be like, Ooh, that, that sounds really good. But nothing that's been like overarching. The one thing the past though, few weeks I've been craving, I, I'm like, Tyler, I've been craving Funfetti cake, <laughs> like cupcakes, but not too much icing. <laughs> I've just been craving that. Isn't that weird? But generally sweets though, I haven't been craving. Like I feel like I craved sweets a lot with Genevieve and this time I really haven't. That's okay. I'm just glad I'm not feeling sick. Listen, I'll take anything over that feeling. Nursery update y'all. We have not done much. We're moving Gigi to my old office and then that room will be the nursery. So the nursery itself was basically done because a lot of that furniture is staying. It's already bolted to the wall. We're not moving it. But for Genevieve, that means we need to get her a couple new pieces of furniture and stuff. So that's almost the big project but we have so much baby stuff that we don't need to buy again which is great and then there are some things I want to upgrade because there's better out there I'm sure I'll do a video on this in the future like 
stuff I'm replacing, new stuff I'm buying, based on just cool new stuff that's out there. That's kind of where that stands. We really haven't bought much for the baby. And again, we don't know the, the gender yet either. And so once we know like, okay, if it's a girl, I have tons of girls clothes. So that's something that's easier. And then if it's a boy, we'll know, okay, maybe we need to like supplement with some other stuff. But I tried to buy just gender neutral stuff when it comes to like the actual like appliances, gadgets, like that kind of stuff. Just because I knew like if we were gonna have more babies, we don't know what they're gonna be and it's just easier to buy like gray and white or whatever. So that I'm glad I did because now we can reuse like all of that. But I think at the end of the day, the biggest difference between that one and this is I just have a lot more confidence. I mean, I know what to expect. I know that things can go wrong and maybe just knowing that anything can happen at any point is it's almost healthier in a way because then my expectations are lower. Like I'm not expecting it to be this perfect fantasy, you know, like birth and, and postpartum period. I know the reality of it and I feel like that's given me a lot of confidence going into it. Like, okay, we kind of have seen worst case scenarios. So I don't know. I, I That is, I think the biggest thing and that makes me happy. I know my husband's feeling the same way. He's feeling just so much more confident going into it because you've done it before. You've done it before. And that, I mean, that's true in life with anything. When it's something you've done, it's like, when I switched schools and be uh, started teaching at a new school, you know, that first year I was so nervous, like I hadn't taught in the school, all the families were different. But then by the second year, you go in a lot more confident because you're like, okay, I've done this before, I can do it again, you know, and now I know all of this background knowledge. That's how we feel going into this. So that is a really nice feeling. If you're watching this and you're pregnant, I pray that you have a happy and healthy pregnancy, you and the baby or babies. And yeah, I'll keep you guys abreast of the <laughs> updates in the journey. I'm so nervous to go to this appointment today. I really am y'all. So hoping for all good things and excited to know what it is, of course. And yeah, oh, and I'm trying to think of the date that I'm putting this video up, but Vlogmas has already started or will be starting very soon when you're seeing this on December 1st over on my husband's channel. It's Tyler Travels TV. It's basically where we vlog every single day in December. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of fun, and it's become like a tradition for a lot of you guys for the holidays to watch them every year. And so I'm inviting you, if you are new, go over there, subscribe, and check those out as they come out because they're just fun. We're just like sharing what we're doing around the house, things we're cooking, life updates, pregnancy updates, all that. So I'd love to have you over there. I guess that's all. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. This video is long. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I love you guys and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.